Hello. Hello, OS fans. The agents of Nightbolt. And Pete and I are in the same room with a bit of time. Ooh. So we thought we'd record a... Staring talk- lovingly across the table. Hello, Peter. Hello. Uh, we thought we would do a talking head for you. Yes. Hello. Right. Or talking well, heads. see our heads. No, but we uh, just imagine we are here. There, and it's in a garage and it's a bit chilly. We've... Well, lots to talk about, really, but we're going to try and keep this one short. And we want to talk about 50 50 rolls, 50 50, 50, 50 rolls, yeah. where I make for my kids' lunch, actually. They're sort of <laughs> half wholemeal, half white. Both anyway. hated. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, no, one of them likes them, the other one hates them. Oh, so I've had to change. I've had to change. Oh, there you go. So yes. Yeah, so anyway, we uh, not don't want to talk about that. But uh, we've noticed with the arrival of Morog, there's lots of terrifying squeals in the meta, as there nearly always is when a new warband came out. I can't remember. There was the oh, there was the whole Catafire Relic meta. Oh, the thing, Catafire there, Relic gate. Yeah, but there, there's been a few other. Oh my God, X X is overpowered. Yep. Um, and Molog is currently the number one overpowered uh, warband of choice. Oh, I think it is very powerful. I, I want to play that. Uh, there's the little clip of um, Leslie Nielsen with everything blowing up and exploding yeah, yeah, yeah. Home where he's going, nothing to see here, move on. I think there's a bit of that. I think there's a little bit of unnecessary terror of people running around screaming, woe is me, the Molog is too great. But obviously Pete and I are playing a very rarefied meta, uh, just the two of us. Yeah. And we've I only... don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> we've only played uh, three, three games with Molog. I think yep, yeah. yeah, we only got our mods out three times. <laughs> exactly. Now, yeah. And YouTubers will only see two of those. Yeah, one of them is a is a Patreon only game. So we haven't got a lot of personal experience to go by. But I know Jamie has written uh, of Catafine Relic has written a piece on Moloch and also the world's best uh, night vault player has also written one about Moloch and how to counteract him. What I wanted to talk about was the fact that the best way to counter him seems to be to introducing 50-50 cards into the game. So so you have cards like, well, the obvious one isn't even, isn't even 50-50, it's Rebound, it's the one that deals the damage back to uh, the attacker. Is that 50-50? No, isn't it? Uh, isn't it's a it? dice roll, but I can't remember yeah, if it's 50-50. It might, it might be dodges and crits. I think it's 66, it I think it's 66 33. Yeah. So people are talking about putting lots of 50-50 cards in the decks, things like Cruel Taunt, which uh, stops you from being inspired on a roll, 50% roll. Rebound, I think we've already mentioned, but Rebound is 33, 66, does all the damage back. Obviously very effective against Morag if he's just hit you for four or five damage. Although he, yeah, he's, he's got to already have a load of upgrades on to do that. I mean, if he's inspired, he's doing four. Yeah. And that's going to put a bit of a dent. So frozen in time as well, which stops him being activated for a whole round, which could be put a real crimp in And that is that, round. that's a, it's a whole round, isn't it? And that's a 50-50 that roll. 50 as well, yeah. And there's, um, there's, of course, Transvicting Stare, which doesn't need a roll. No, so uh, that's kind of where, where I'm coming from on this. Do we need these 50-50 rolls? Does the game need these 50-50 rolls? I always avoid them, um, and and I kind of feel that the game's worse for them. We mostly avoid them, but we do take things like Soul Trap and Tethered very, Spirit. Very rarely. Yeah, true. Very rarely. I've, I almost never take Soul Trap. I did take it in our previous game, uh, which mate, you probably haven't actually seen yet, uh, because it's the game we just played tonight and it will be out probably after this I did take it then but there was a very different, definite reason for that I tend to take one of those two usually oh, okay. um, and, and I also take um, things like Last Chance yeah like that, but that's La- I can't be around a bit more to Last Chance but you tend to play the Dodge Warbands and Last Chance is a little bit better I think for the Dodge Warbands yes because Last Chance is you don't want to have a successful yeah. role because so. um, I never I, I don't know, never take Soul Trap certainly since they've been restricted I don't think I've, t- I don't think I've taken Soul Trap or, or Tethered Spirit so we do tend to overall avoid the uh, the chance cards. So taking the sort of rebound as the extreme, if you like, I think Jamie had written in, in a game he'd had, it was he'd lost two one and in the two games that he lost he, he was playing he was playing Molog. In the two games that he lost the managed to rebound him. he managed to rebound him. And I and I kind of feel like that the, the game is that's it's a not what lucky, the isn't it? Because out of three games yes. having it played twice and for your opponent to win both times in the when it's played that's but that it's isn't a bit unlucky, but yeah. That isn't the way the game should be. The game shouldn't be when I've got I'm playing this warband, you've got that card, if you get the roll, then you win. Now isn't I know that? obviously there is more nuance and comp- you know, complexity to that. Is, there is more to it than that. It isn't literally just oh, we don't even need to bother playing, we'll just roll this dice. But I kind of feel like the game is better when with with less luck in it. Now obviously there is always luck mm. in the game. But I, I just kind of feel that with the arrival of Molog and the kind of need to include these cards, potentially need to include these cards, I just feel like it's going to work and come down to if your role for Frozen in Time comes off, then you're much more likely to win. 
Yeah. And, and I kind of feel like they're very swingy. I think that's what I'm really good at. I think they're swingy for Molog because Molog's so reliant on Yeah, exactly. On yeah, yeah. It really, for him, it can really make him win or lose the game. Hmm. And I think, but therefore, it, as a knock-on effect, it potentially makes tournaments less interesting because everybody's got these big swingy cards in, which don't actually do very much in an ordinary game. Yeah, I mean, in your average game, yeah, it's a bit of a pain if your Gerzag gets, um, can't yeah. do anything, but you've still got three other guys who aren't that bad. No. And for most warbands, there's at least one secondary sort of leader, but Molog got nothing. It's Molog and nothing, pretty much. You could say, yeah, you've got three squigs, but yeah, they're not... They're no. not your glory earners. You're not going to be putting your tomb of offerings on your bat squig, are you? No, exactly. So, so I kind of feel, well, maybe I'm getting a bit ups, uh, obsessed with the monologue situation as well, but I just kind of feel like things that introduce more 50-50 cards, for me, weaken the game because you, you, you it's like I say, it's a big swing on a, on a dice roll, one way or the other. Yeah, yeah, there is that. I'm just waiting for a card to come out now, which is a ploy, a reaction to a failed ploy which enables you to re-roll the dice. <laughs> it just be screaming then as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because be must-haves. I mean, you can argue that, okay, if you've got a uh, Molog, you should take Misdirection. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even then, you're then reliant on if your opponent plays that card and you've got Misdirection. Yeah, Misdirection is, is choose, isn't it? Yes. And there isn't, there's Forceful that's Denial as well, but that's another 50-50 card. Yes. Forceful Denial. So I kind of feel that, Ah, you know, it just... Are they putting too much randomness into the game overall? Because, yeah, you've got that issue that if, you've, if you're just reliant on a couple of cards to either see your warband through to winning or or just going crushing defeat because you just can't do most hmm. of what you want to do, you can argue that maybe, um, even if your opponent does have the cards to stop Molog in his tracks, if we're talking specifically about Molog, you know, he's got to get him at the right time and, and he's got to get it so it stops you from doing a lot of stuff that you needed Molog for. But then Molog's pretty much always going to be one of your main mainstays in your plan. And if not, then what kind of mental deck are you building with Molog? <laughs> yeah. Um, and if your opponent is relying on those cards coming out to be able to beat you and nothing else, I mean, some people are saying Molog's easy. You can just, you know, just pile in on him. He's only got one shield. He could be quite quite quickly taken down with a slightly offensive warband maybe but mm, yeah we, I mean we, that's the where we limit where we're limited because we don't play very many other games than the ones you see on camera so I don't know how easy that is to do and obviously I don't really know like the comp competitive meta if you like I know the guy who won the tournament that Jamie played in the final Jamie said that the guy had, bought, had read the meta if you like and had made a Molog killing deck and sort of I guess half the people turned up with Molog and so his deck was very effective. Well, there is that, yeah. I mean, some people sit there saying, I'm watching all this terror and panic of people running around screaming the world is ending and I'm just going to keep playing my regular deck and beating all the non Molog players. Yeah. And that will create some kind of cycle going around of mm. people not doing it and then everybody... Well, if there aren't any non Molog then... players, I know what happens when Molog plays Molog. Um... That's got to be a quick... That's going to be a decided... Yeah. That's going to get decided within a couple of turns, I would have thought. But again, you don't really want it decided on who gets the rebound off. It's a, I think that's no, a shame. No. Um, I mean, I, 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 my preferred method, and there are ways to do it, I think, is to build a, an anti monog deck but with cards that are useful um, against, against everyone. So th cards like Transfixing, Transfixing Stare. Stare. That's pretty much. Yeah. I think that's going to be on a bar list very soon, along yeah, with yeah, two offerings, because... Yeah. I can't think of many situations where I wouldn't take that card regardless of who I am, yeah. whether I know who I'm coming up against it wasn't or not. It was massively used for the God, God's War Hunt. They, they're, cause they're, I think that's one of the God's War Hunt's advantages is that they're, they're all competent, but none of them excel. So actually you've got nobody... It's like, well, I could play it, but you'll just if I play it on uh, Sean, you'll just charge with... Grundon. Possibly, but so if you do, if you do beef up one particular person, yeah, you, you get can, the right yeah, time. Yes. you can really throw a spanner. In but the I, but I think, I think Transfix is a, is a very good card. Uh, Invisible Walls is another one which has an application across outside of the game and isn't a fifty-fifty roll. I much prefer the cards that aren't fifty-fifty rolls. Yes, because the other thing is, for me as a player, and again, guys at home, what do you think? For me, I want my plan to work in most circumstances. If I get the cards, I don't want a situation where. I, if if I don't get the roll off, then I'm screwed. Yeah. And if I go, if I if I don't, if I get it, then great. I, w I want it to be a bit more reliable than that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know what you think. I don't. No, I agree. I think I'd rather, I'd rather just, 
a rather me dice came up out of one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to that end, yes, I don't want to trust the dice at all wherever I can get away with it. No, that's true. You, yeah, my you, dice absolutely yeah. suck quite I think often, you are so. due a huge slice of luck at some point. There's yeah, going to sure be some... I'm going to buy a lottery ticket this weekend. I there's going to be and, some uh, desperate, that. desperate um, game. I've got coming up at some point where all your luck comes in on, on one... On one game, and then I'll smash you twenty nothing, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, and it'll yeah. go back to me losing. <laughs> but you know what? I'll take that. I'll take that right now. But yeah, I I would I would definitely rather know that my plans are mostly set in stone, and are mostly guaranteed to do what I want. Yeah. Than the alternative, which is if I can get this one in three chance here, and if I can get this one in two chance here, and if I can get this roll up here. Because you've got to rely on the cards coming out, yeah. and then and then. And and not only them coming out, but then the, the thing and coming the off, and then it, and well. so if it doesn't come off, then you've really wasted your time, I think. Now I'm sure there are some players out there that absolutely stuff their deck full of fifty fifty cards. Possibly because fifty fifty cards overall are much more powerful. The than effect their, is, is good, than yeah. Their, than their guaranteed cast or use counterparts. Yeah, they're, they're nearly always better because you need that roll yeah. off. Um, Except for spells, spells need to roll off, and they kind of suck a bit. I'm not really still. still no, we have, that's another ho- that's whole, whole topic of one. conversation. Yes, so I'm sure a lot of people probably play with a lot more chance-based cards in their deck than we do. Possibly. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just a control freak. That's what it is. Well, there is a little bit of that, but then I, I I just think it does make more sense to make a deck that you know what's gonna what mm. it's gonna do and what you can do in your turns rather than if I'm lucky yeah I think so so I'm not quite sure what that deck will be my anti moral deck I suppose there was a bit of anti moral tech in the uh, Oroch deck I played tonight uh, I think if you don't know who you're coming up against you're going to have to have something in there hmm, yeah definitely because if you've got nothing in there to stop a Molog running around yeah then you're just in trouble no well I ran Transfix Xterra and Invisible Walls to try and stop the Rampage Invisible Walls is definitely less useful against Molog because although it's a guaranteed use you don't have to be near him or anything he has got that range so yeah, that's true. But I suppose you've got it. If, if you get it out early or get it in the right time, it just gives you an extra turn to run away. Possibly, could, could, could possibly. possibly be, yeah. Yes, but then your Molog players are going to have movie cards. Oh to, yeah. To get but if you've got Fainway Crystal, maybe Hidden Paths, you've got that chance to sort of bing yeah. and, and disappear. It's, it's not a perfect solution by by any stretch, but I I, I just I prefer it to um, to having a, like a fifty fifty or he's uninspired. I mean that's pretty powerful. The uninspired card, but I think it's mostly crap against everybody else. Um, For the most part, I think certain people do much better once they're inspired. Molog definitely does much better yeah. once he's inspired. It's killer against him. But then even like uh, Gerzag and stuff like oh, that. Oh, definitely, it has its uses. But I just yeah. think as a fifty-fifty card, it isn't worth having. Yes, it's like if you un- if you uninspire Fjord and you get smacked in the face by Tefk, you know, there's yeah. kind of most of the others have got backup, whereas obviously Molog hasn't. Definitely. Um, yes, I, w- I don't think I would ever even contemplate taking that until Molog's now roaming around, and it's now definitely a card that I would consider taking if I had the yeah. chance that I might come up against I mean, I would definitely, if I was playing Nighthawk, I would definitely take the Cruel Taunt. No, not Cruel Taunt. I can't remember what it's called. Deathly Visage? Uh, no. no, it's called um, Deathly Visage or something, so, like, yeah, that. I think something it, like that. Yeah, the one that's basically a reaction, isn't it? And yes, he, and and they inspire miss them, attacks, and they inspire. you uninspire them, yeah, which is pretty brutal. Although, yeah, he has got a miss, of course. So it's a little but he only has two hammers, yeah. so... As we've discovered, he does miss. It depends on whether he's beefed up. But of course, if you've got it on a, on a less good night horn, it's worth the risk. Definitely worth yeah, the risk. Yeah, run it. Just a, a, yeah. a little chain gasp. Uh, yeah, chain gasp. Chain gasp. Chain gasp. Chain gasp. Chain gasp. Yeah. Uh, chain gasp in there. Then yeah, it's uh, it's definitely not a hard one to. It's a no brainer there. I think. So, what do you think, guys? Do you like the fifty-fifty cards? Would you stack your deck full of them on, on the off chance you meet a monarch on a dark stormy night, or will you just carry on regardless? Uh, let us know in the comments below. There let us know no if we're talking rubbish. Yeah, but there are no wrong answers. I think I think this is it's an opinion piece. So, yeah, that's true. Uh, what is your opinion on the matter? Yeah, and bear in mind if it's not the same as ours, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and on that bomb, <laughs> we shall see you soon in the mirrored city somewhere. Bye. Bye.